Hi again then guys and welcome to another movie review of course on the channel and as I promised last time in my late review of Joker, this is a review of Velvet Buzzsaw. Came out last year, 2019, it was directed by Dan Gilroy, who you might not be too familiar with depending on your taste in movies, but he happens to have directed one of my favourite films of the 2010s, Nightcrawler, which incidentally also has of course Jake Gyllenhaal and Rene Russo, who are also in this movie, as well as John Malkovich and a number of other semi-recognisable to recognisable faces. And in terms of, first of all, as you can see from the time codes, my non-spoiler review, and we'll get into some spoiler talk later on, but to keep it non-spoiler first of all, if you're going into this movie blind, maybe you haven't watched any trailers, maybe you haven't read anything about the film, what do you need to know? Well, I would say more importantly, first of all, than the story itself, you need to know that if you have watched Nightcrawler, this is nothing like that. <laughs> it's a completely different movie, completely different story, of course, but also, more importantly than that, a completely different experience. And that, I think, is crucial to know, because this movie is not as highly rated, it's not as talked about as Nightcrawler, and not as many people tend to like it quite as much. And I completely understand all of those things. In fact, I like Nightcrawler more. I believe that Nightcrawler has more rewatchability than this movie does, and I think that overall it may even be, objectively speaking, a better film. However... I love this movie, and I loved it for totally different reasons. In fact, one of my favourite things about it is that it's so different to Nightcrawler. Even myself as a writer, each of my stories is totally different to the last one. My first book, Buddy, coming-of-age horror. My second book, Spore, creature feature, 80s-style B-movie monster. Third story, A Room Called Sin. I don't even know what the genre for that would be. This movie is very different to the last one, and I like it when a creative person, a director, a writer does that. Not everything you make needs to feel exactly the same. But even if you didn't know that he directed Nightcrawler, I think you could kind of feel that. There's just something about the film which has that kind of vibe. He almost has a similar vibe to what I would describe as being in the skin I live in, which I don't think was directed by him, if I recall correctly, but it's that similar kind of genre blending almost weirdly beautifully horrific at the same time sort of idea and as i said in my review years ago now for the skin i live in i love movies that do that they're so weird they don't fit into a box they they almost leave you thinking about the movie for a lot longer than a, just a clear cut you know slasher or whatever i prefer movies like that not everyone likes them but they do make you think and that is definitely what this movie does now in terms of that story the story is actually fairly simple. It starts off without really any horror at all. Again, no spoilers. It's a drama, basically, to begin with. A lot of hoity-toity, up-their-own-ass kind of artistic types who are clearly just there to make money, but of course are talking about how this makes you feel and the passion coming through the this piece and all that kind of usual BS. But these relationships begin to be formed in the film. Of course you need to care about the characters in any good movie and this movie does a good job of that. In fact in that regard it might do a better job of it than Nightcrawler does. In fact, that's arguable but in my opinion. Now as far as how it progresses, again no spoilers, we're not there yet. The essential idea is they're all headhunting each other, they're all kind of you know friendly to the face but stabby behind the back types, no surprises there, but they come across some art which they haven't seen before. The art begins to change hands and things begin to go wrong. And not necessarily just in a horror movie sense, even from the sense of people trying to screw each other over for financial gain. It's a very interesting mix of almost drama, thriller and horror in different elements. Almost like its own genre in a weird kind of way. Now, in terms of the stuff that I believe was really good about the film, maybe things that were not so good, I'll honestly say that there's no, there's no real single downside or nitpick that I have with the movie. I liked all of the performances, the casting was fantastic, I love how unique it felt, I like the artistic bent that the movie had, the artistic lean. The only slight thing, and I wouldn't even call this a disappointment, but more of a surprise to me, is that given the subject matter of the movie, it really did justify being a lot more playful and a lot more, maybe even experimental, with stuff like camera angles and cinematography. But beyond a couple of shots, like for instance one going through a champagne glass, 
they didn't really do that much. There was some visual effects which add to the flavour, but the actual camera work was relatively expected. And although, as I said, I wasn't necessarily disappointed by that, I did find it surprising, because in a film about art, you'd think they might go a little bit more oddball with that kind of thing. I'm not necessarily talking Dutch angles all over the place, but you know what I mean. Get a bit experimental, maybe. But, as I said, that's not essential to the film by any stretch. It's just something which I noticed. Something which, if I were doing it, maybe, I might have done differently. Now, in terms of the story, in terms of how it pans out, the characters, all that kind of thing, I liked it all. The story, of course, gets a little bit wacky. Uh, The people are sometimes unbearably ridiculous in terms of how they are towards each other. But at the same time, that has this strange believability because they are critics and artists and they do come off as weird people in real life as well. I'm sure you can think of some. So that felt authentic. It's actually one of the few horror movies where the characters being weird is completely justified. Now, in terms of stuff which maybe I didn't like, I already kind of touched on that. As far as other things, I can't really think of anything specific. So overall, for the non-spoiler part of the review... My thoughts summed up would be, if you're looking for a horror-slash-drama-slash-thriller that's not really like anything else, kind of pretentious in subject matter, but not pretentious in the way it shows the subject matter, which is also something that I did like. The movie itself is not pretentious. It's actually kind of 80s horror, if you really think about it. But the characters in it are pretentious. Which is interesting. There's not many movies that are like that. And I enjoy that aspect of it. Should you watch it? Yes. You should watch it if you enjoyed Nightcrawler, for sure. Although it is very different. You should definitely watch it if you enjoy movies like The Skin I Live In. Or Suspiria, that kind of thing. Because it is oddball. It is different. Chances are, if you are that kind of person, you might have already seen this anyway. And probably you're more here for the spoiler review. But if you haven't watched it... I would urge you to do so. And also, stick with it, because this is not a movie that jumps into the action straight away. It's very deliberately paced. I wouldn't call it slow, because there's a lot of dialogue, a lot of character-based stuff, but it's not like a slasher. You're not expecting blood everywhere all the time. It's just not that kind of movie. But neither is Nightcrawler, and it's still very effective. It actually leans almost more toward the thriller side than the horror for the majority of the movie. Now, to get into the spoiler talk... What aspects of this movie would need to be discussed in a spoiler sense? Well, I guess we could get into some of the kills, perhaps, maybe the overall mythology of the film. Now, of course, for those of you who have seen it, the boiled-down concept that the movie revolves around, as I said, is very much like an 80s horror movie. It's a possessed selection or collection of artwork. It's a pretty simple idea, and it gets revenge on people who try to pass it around or keep it or sell it. Very simple, very effective idea, and you can do a lot with it, because not many movies have even tried that, let alone succeeded. I like that. I do like that angle. In terms of the deaths, I think that some of the deaths are definitely better than others. For instance, when, and I'm awful with remembering names, but when the primary female actor who first found the paintings, who was a uh, receptionist, I believe, to begin with, when she dies, being, you know, covered in paint, I thought that was cool. I wanted more of that, though. I thought that her death and Rene Russo's death at the very end, that was the kind of deaths which I wish we had more of. Because that, it really feeds into the concept of the art being possessed. Because when Rene Russo becomes the painting that she was looking at with the two shadows of the cacti and the the cat next to her, that was cool. Art imitating life, life imitating art kind of stuff. When the receptionist died with the paint crawling up her and kind of making her become the wall. Great idea. Really cool. Almost like a Nightmare on Elm Street kind of vibe to that one. I like that. Some of the other ones, though, I think were kind of squandered. The death that I think was totally wasted in the film was actually Jake Gyllenhaal. Being killed by that animatronic guy. I didn't get why that was the case. Because he was specifically trying, at least from what I could see... To put things right. And yet, the spirit, or whatever you'd call it, still killed him. I don't really get that. It almost seemed like... Well, to be honest, that was a pivot point for me in the film. And although I definitely wouldn't say that this broke the film for me, or made me dislike it by any stretch, it made me like the villain less. This entity. 
Because up until that point in the film, it made sense. These people were trying to profiteer off of it. But even from the start, Jake Gyllenhaal, you could say the book was for profit, but not really in the same sense. He was trying to get this guy's life out there. So from the start, even before he realised what was going on, he was curious about the guy, not just the art. And then he was trying to put things right. For me, that was wasted, because killing him didn't make sense. Unless I'm missing something, but to me, that was kind of a wasted kill, because if anything, he should have died last. He should have died after Rene Russo. I did not feel that Rene Russo earned the final death. She wasn't important enough in the film, and she didn't do anything... Excuse me. She didn't do anything to really earn being the final survivor, to me. But there you go, that's the choice that they made. Maybe that was the point, that life isn't fair, but it didn't seem to be that kind of commentary in the movie, so I'm not really sure. In terms of stuff that I maybe loved that gets into, into spoiler territory, what else is there? I, I really enjoyed John Malkovich's performance. I like the fact that the ending credits went back to him. I thought that was a nice little nod. And also, of course, he had no retribution because he had nothing to do with it to begin with. I thought that was very cool. Um, I like the fact that the younger assistant, again, I, I don't recall the actress's name, but she's from Stranger Things. I thought that she was great in the film, how she kept on finding the bodies every time. That was cool. Uh, there was some humour in the film as well, some moments that made me laugh. Some of the deaths actually made me laugh as well. I did find that the characters did a good job, or the actors more specifically, especially that primary actress who first found the art. The British actress. She became so easy to despise through the film because nobody else in the movie had the character arc that she did. Not a single one. Rene Russo didn't change through the whole movie. She was the same person. John Malkovich, you could say changed, but he wasn't really in the movie enough. Jake Gyllenhaal didn't really change. He just came to know something that he didn't before. And I believe that even at the start of the film, if he'd have known that, he'd have tried to do something about it. Because he did genuinely seem to care about the art more than people. So I think he would have tried to put it right, even at the start. Uh, the girl from Stranger Things, she didn't have an arc at all. She wasn't in it enough. So the only person to really have an arc in the movie was that primary British actress. Except her arc went down. She spiralled. She became worse. She became more pretentious. She became almost unbearable to listen to with this smarmy, sneering attitude that she had toward everyone. The way she was dumping the critic for the artist and then the artist for whatever else came up next. Not that she was undecided. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. But it's like being important became the most important thing to her. And in actual fact, always was. And I'm not saying that that's an arc that shouldn't have happened. That's exactly the arc that she needed. And it was a great arc. She played it well because you came to hate her, or at least I did through the movie. But uh, yeah, I found that interesting. In terms of you know my overall feelings, I've talked about stuff that I liked and didn't like. So I don't think there's really any more that I need to get into in terms of specifics. But um, I love the movie. At the same time, though, I don't know if I'd watch it again. Because to me, there are certain films where they have fantastic rewatchability. My favourite movie of all time, The Thing. I can watch that any time. It's just a lot of fun. Certain movies are just like that. Even Nightcrawler, for me, has more replayability than this movie does. This movie, to me, is more of, and this sounds as pretentious as the people in the film do, but it's more of an experience. It's like you go through this weird almost like a snapshot of a world that you'll probably never be a part of and a world that even though you've never been in it seems uncannily believable that these people probably are this ridiculous because that's what artists and critics come off like so from that point of view as an experience as cliched and as overused as that is i believe that this is a movie that it legitimately applies to and I would put it up there with something like The Skin I Live In as being a completely unique and highly artistic approach at a horror film. And for that, I liked it a lot. Of the two, I think that... I think that this movie was more fun because The Skin I Live In is darker, in a sense. It's almost like more of a, a disturbing movie than this one is. But I think The Skin I Live In is more effective at being unnerving because there's just something... 
romantically horrific about that movie. This movie doesn't have that. This is more like uh, people so wrapped up in their own pretensions that they don't even realise they're going to die. That kind of idea. So I like both. They remind me of each other in weird kind of ways, but I think that if you enjoy one, you'll probably enjoy the other. So if you're watching this review and you have seen The Skin I Live In, I think you'll enjoy this movie too, to some degree. L vice versa. If you've watched this one and you haven't seen The Skin I Live In, I would recommend checking it out. I did a review for it, but just go and watch the movie. Just go and check it out. Overall though, that's it for my thoughts. Of course, stick around on the channel for more, and I would suggest slapping that notification bell in order to see all of my new videos. But for now, as always, thanks for watching.